Joining us now is Oji Yokpe with stories trending around the world. Hello, Jenix. Good morning. I love that How are you? With stories <laughs> trending around the world. How are you? Good morning. I love it when he gets that animated. Tundra, <laughs> Biola, no, drum show, roll. Guess, you know I know why I'm doing this. I know, oh, God, darling. you look victorious. I love Thank it when you change you. your looks like this. You Thank look you, darling. lovely. Coming and what color you, is that? high praise. This is peach. Mm -hmm. I know you like to call food um, colors by the names of food. I, I'm not so this is good for there's you. The, this you, is you peach. There's a culprit right yeah. there. You could, <laughs> you could call it apricot. Hi, it's beautiful. It's in the fruity <laughs> situation. You look lovely. Thank you. Rufaya, you have a smile today. I am going to Sorry, make you no, smile. Good Sorry, morning. No. How are you? How's it going? Good, good. I love See that you promo. Love uh, I love it. I love it. Well, good morning to you viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In the United States, Francis Hergen told Congress on Tuesday that Facebook's products harm children and fuel polarization in the country, while its executives refuse to change because they elevate profits over safety. And she laid responsibility on the company's CEO, Mark Zuckerberg. In France, the Catholic Church has expressed shame and pleaded for forgiveness after a devastating report found that at least 330,000 children were victims of violent sexual abuse by clergy and lay members of the church institutions over the past 70 years. In Sweden, three scientists, Sikiro Manabi, Klaus Hesselmann, and Giorgio Parisi on Tuesday won the Nobel Prize in Physics for helping to explain and predict complex forces of nature, including expanding our understanding of climate change and the united arab emirates on tuesday announced plans to send a probe to land on an asteroid between mars and jupiter to collect data on the origins of the universe it is the latest project in the oil rich federation's ambitious space program honor sports the story of Booba Wallace, NASCAR's only black full-time driver who last year successfully campaigned to get the Confederate flag banned from races and on Monday became the first black driver in 58 years to win a NASCAR Cup Series race, has made the rounds, following tributes from sports fans across the globe. Finally, under entertainment, Grammy Award-winning singer Adele on Tuesday put forward a release date for her first song since 2015, titled Easy On Me. The highly anticipated song, which will be released on October 15th, generated a buzz on Twitter after the singer posted a snippet of the music video online. Again, was trending by paying tribute to teachers across the globe, especially here in Nigeria, where they work tirelessly and are not given enough accolades for grooming some of the greatest leaders of our nation, including Nigeria's Vice President, Yemi Osibajo, who this year marked his 40th year as a professor, while some of the students he has taught held his achievements in this video as yesterday, October 5th, marked Walt's Teacher's Day. Let's take a look. Fantastic teacher. Happy 40th anniversary. Prof taught us evidence. Now, what struck me about Prof as a lecturer was his brilliance. He was the only lecturer that we had that would deliver his lectures from start to finish, off the top of his head, with no lecture notes. And that impressed me and encouraged me to be a better student. Then known simply as Yemi Oshibajo, he was one of the youngest and certainly the most inspiring of our law lecturers. Yemi Oshimbaju only came with his bottle of coke, if anything at all. Yet, it was the class where students were most attentive and disciplined. His habit of meticulous preparation, of knowing and understanding intimately what he wants to talk about, and of speaking with uncommon clarity and logic are all second nature to the great professor. As a result of Professor Yemi Oshibadu's erudite teaching of the subject of evidence, I have found the practice of my profession as a litigator 
almost seamless, especially in the area of evidence, because it's a tool in the playbook for a good litigator that is next to indispensable. Prof, congratulations on your 40 years as a teacher. Sir, thank you for being a role model. I celebrate a renowned teacher. Fantastic teacher. Prof, we love you, we appreciate you. Prof, congratulations. He remains to this day a teacher of teachers, teaching us not just by his words, but also by his conduct. Well, congratulations to Vice President Yemi Osivajo. He marked his 40 years as a professor. Amazing mm -hmm. tribute to him Amazing. yesterday. And as you know, yesterday marked World's Teachers Day. Yeah. I am really, really proud of all our teachers. You remember our teachers. I mean, I of know that course. this is a very important story for you to do a viola. It is. It's a very big deal to yes. me every year. We are all what our parents and our teachers yeah. made us. The fact mm -hmm. that we're sitting here doing a job like this, would that be possible if we never got an education, yes. if somebody did not sacrifice? Teaching is one of the highest vocations as far as I'm concerned. And I remember teachers that made a huge difference in my life, and I'll forever be grateful to those teachers. Absolutely. Dr. Bati, your Okay, analysis. you brought uh, students of uh, <clears throat> Professor Yemi so, Oshimbaju, yeah. uh, celebrating him as uh, a good example of a teacher. Well, let me say that I was also privileged to have been in his class. Yay. He taught, for the most part, at the University of Lagos. But in those days, we had at the uh, uh, law faculty, Lagos State University at Longojo, teachers from the faculty of law at the University of Lagos. And he used to come in those days to teach us law of evidence and equity, law of equity. And if we take those two courses, you see how, you know, uh, very tough they could be. Particularly, you'll be required to you know, master sections of the Evidence Act. And, you know, this teacher, Professor Shibajo, will just come in wearing a sharp suit, <laughs> and he'll just be going up and down. He will be coaching every section, you From know. So I can confirm, yeah. you know, what are those, those other persons who have sat in his class before have said in that uh, video. Highly cerebral, very dutiful, diligent. And then, of course, you'll be praying that, well, God, let me just pass this course. <laughs> as tough as it is but you know uh, but you were encouraged by his own example his mastery of it and apart from evidence and equity he's the author of one of the most authoritative books on media law a book he did on media law uh with uh, one professor called peter fogham you know who was his uh, very good colleague but to speak generally now uh first congratulations to Prof professor shibaju 40 years yes. teaching other people grooming them Okay, if uh, I have issues with my uh, remembering uh, the Evidence Act or the law of uh, equity, don't blame him. You blame me. <laughs> <laughs> it means I was the poor student. But in any case, generally, I mean, teachers, we used to say uh, that their reward is in heaven. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I think we should change that. You know, yeah. a teacher's reward should be here on earth. In other countries, you know, their reward is here on earth. But unfortunately, teachers are very badly treated mm -hmm. uh, in Nigeria today. Only yesterday, the uh, uh, national teachers, the AUT, National Union of Teachers, and some other uh, stakeholders were complaining that last year, President Muhammad Buhari promised that uh, the age of retirement for teachers, for secondary school, primary school teachers, I guess, will be extended from 60 to 65 years yes. and that there will be a review of their salaries and emoluments. Correct. One year later, after that particular proposed bill had been approved by the Federal Executive oh, Council, God. nothing has happened. You know, even the Ministry of Education confirmed that this has been approved since January Absolutely. 2021. Correct. This is, uh, what month are we now? October. Uh, we're in October. The thing has, since January, Nobody has had the presence of mind to take it to the National Assembly. How about Very commitment? How about making promises and keeping absolutely. those promises? I thought the president speaks and everybody is just going to come. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Everybody yeah. get to work. They're going to comply. No, that's how it is. You know, like the Twitter ban. No, that's how it is in other parts of the world. When the president speaks, he does not speak in vain. Nigeria must be a very unique country where the president will give his word and nobody will follow up. So that should not be the situation. Yeah. Teachers' salaries should be paid, just as other workers deserve their wages. And you cannot have a good education system if you have teachers who are half of the time running a barbing salon or selling chin chin or pop puff uh, during school hours. At the university level, fair. they, they say they, I hear they now sell handouts. Mm. So this is the big problem that we need to address because without a good, sound education system and well-motivated teachers, 
we will lose that capacity to compete. Very well said, Dr. Abati. Rufai, your analysis on this topic. Truth has to be told. It is an indication of the kind of country we live in, that the most important things, we don't do them. If it's corrupt money people want to steal, they will pass that money on time. Money now for teachers that are the future of this country, they'll never pass it. It shows we're not ready. We're not ready. We're not ready. We don't regard teachers. And we forget that a teacher is the first and the most important agent of socialization for the first 20 years of the life of your child. Because he will go to school and the first person he will look up to, more than you the parent, is the teacher. You would see that teacher spend about averagely two to four hours with him every day, depending on the time in primary school, and you go to university, the lecturer has that same effect on you. But what are we doing for that? Nothing. We beat around the bush. Congratulations, Professor Shibaju. Yes. So congratulations to all teachers there. Congratulations, Dr. Abati. You're a teacher too yourself. Yes. You taught so many people, you know. Yes. Uh, yes. I, 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 I know one of your students the other day. And, yeah. and I taught too at a point in my life. Congratulations to congratulations every teacher. Congratulations to you too. Yes. You get. Absolutely. But the most important thing is, if we want this country to grow, we need to teach. We need to, we need to, we need to do everything possible to improve the welfare of our teachers. Our teachers are suffering. You remember during COVID, how a teacher did a video and was crying that he was hungry for food, nothing to eat. Corruption. We, we are quick at that. Teachers' money now, they, they won't pay. Unfair, unacceptable. We'll take another story in Kano State. Reports reaching us indicate that family members of a 16-year-old girl identified as Hussein are in dispute with the Accountant General of the Federation, Ahmed Idris, after he allegedly lured the teenager with millions of naira to persuade her into marrying him as his fourth wife. According to reports, the Accountant General had kicked against the family after they refused to consent to the marriage and insisted on marrying her, despite the age gap of over 40 years between the two. Idris is said to have tied the knot with the teenager in a secret wedding held recently in the state. This is, uh, I mean, such a shocking development. This was circulating on social media all over yesterday. I mean, the reports are not 100% confirmed uh, to Nduabiola, I must stress that. But if this is actually true, it is quite appalling that our, one of our leaders is engaging in this underage marriage scheme. OJ, it's so disgusting. Even if this particular story is not true, somewhere there's a 16-year-old girl yes. being forced into marriage with a much older man. And there have been so many campaigns, child not bride, so many campaigns advocating for the um, passage of the Child Rights Act in the northern states of Nigeria, all falling on deaf ears. Why? Because people want to legally be allowed to be a pervert. That is the bottom line. They want to be able to marry children and cause them all kinds of physical, emotional, psychological trauma. This is a disgusting practice. And I had hoped when you now have a president like a Muhammad Buhari with the kind of cult-like, you know, adoration that he commands, especially in the north of this country, all over the country, but yeah. especially in the north of this country, that he could use a lot of that influence that he has to advocate for th this type of thing, because he did not do that. Mm. So he obviously knows better. People will listen to somebody like him. If it's a Christian voice or a Southern voice, it will be completely dismissed. But somebody like him, this is, these are the things I had hoped that eight years of a Muhammadu Buhari presidency would at least give us, especially in the north, so that some of these evils, we can finally put it behind us. But alas, here we are. A government official has the audacity to do something like this in Nigeria. I do hope this is not true. It's deeply disturbing and it's sickening. Only uh, last week we talked about R. Kelly being mm -hmm. locked up in jail for engaging in this type of criminal activity. This is what I, I term it as. But it's not today now, Oji. Are, are you shocked? You remember Child No Bride? Wasn't it a former governor in this country, a serving senator? I was fighting frantically just for him to be able to marry, I think, an 11 or 12 year old Egyptian girl. Was it the Zampara? 14. 14 year old Zampara, Egyptian Zampara, girl. Yeah. You know, a full grown man, oh. excited, fighting frantically, had nothing to bring to the National Assembly than to push a bill that would make it easy for him to marry a 14 year old. You see the mindset. We cannot build a country this way. These girls should go to school. 
We need to put the laws in place that will stop people like this. That's why we need to empower the girl child. We need to empower women in, in areas that they feel downcast. We need to empower them. We need to send them to school. Just imagine what that girl could be. She could be an astronaut. She could be an engineer. Absolutely. A woman wrote the mathematical code that sent a man to space first in NASA. So we need to empower women, not marry them over the age of 14. How does it make you feel? Because you want to lord over the lady. How about Okay, what well we're as dealing with here is, Dr. you know, Bantz. at one level is with a conflict of laws. And that was clearly signposted in 2013 in the case of uh, Senator Ahmed Yerima. That's the name of the former governor you were trying to recall. When on the floor of the National Assembly, there was an attempt to re review, revise, amend Section 29 of the 1999 uh, Constitution, inherited from the 1979 Constitution, in terms of as what age can you renounce citizenship? Mm. You have to be of full age. And the conception is that full age uh, is uh, 18. However, the Constitution of Nigeria does not state the age of marriage. The Child, the Child Rights Act of 2003 is very clear that full age means when you are 18. But the problem we had with that particular debate then, which was the basis for the child no bride argument, was yes. that this Senator Ahmed Yerima, who had married earlier a, a girl of 15, divorced her at 17, and then decided to take a 14-year-old bride uh, from uh, Egypt. And that caused great controversy. The uh, agency in charge of prohibition of human trafficking, NGOs, you know, rose in unison to say, no, this is not accepted. Now, the first time uh, that was debated, there was support for about two thirds. But when I met Yerima opposed it and some other governors from the north, on the grounds of one, religion, two, they quoted Sharia, you know, that under the Sharia, when a woman, once you marry a woman, whether she's 12 or she's 11 yeah, or 10, then she's of full age. And this caused a lot of uproar. But till today, since that 2013, that has not happened. The Child Rights Act is, uh, you know, domesticated in only 23 states of Nigeria. Most of the states in the north have refused to domesticate it. So now you are talking about the Accountant General of Nigeria, who is yes. 61 years old. Idris, 61 years old. And it is alleged that uh, he's, he has married secretly a girl of 16 years, a girl who is under the age of consent. Her family is saying that she cannot be married. Yes. And that this is a, a, a case of a child abuse. Yes. This is a, a case of a credo snatching, you know, and that uh, it's unacceptable to them and that the girl has been enticed and all of that. But I have not seen any response from the uh, accused, uh, you know, uh, accountant general of the Federation. So whether it is confirmed or not, we do not know. But this child bride phenomenon is a major issue Correct. it's a major threat to the growth of the girl child you know and i think uh, if you look at it even from a religious point of view some people are scandalized that uh, a man that is uh, almost entering uh, the uh, winter season will be going about you know uh, 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 playing season. around the cradle of uh, small girls I, I think that uh, you know it's uh, it's quite a scandal and the international community is always alarmed now you have lawmakers in Nigeria who are always looking for, uh, you know, small, small girls, teenagers, and luring them away with a special attraction. Poverty, I guess, is also part of the problem. I guess we're all looking forward to a response from Ahmed Idris. This is really unaccept unacceptable. High places, yeah. honestly. Well, we'll take our final story. One of the umbrella bodies of herdsmen in Nigeria, the Meiti Ala Kautal Hore, on Tuesday, announced that herders won't support any southern candidate who is against open grazing should he or she run for president in 2023. The spokesman for the group, Saleh Al-Hassan, described the passage of the law to ban open grazing in the southern states as satanic and politically motivated and vowed to sue the southern governors over the law. Al-Hassan also alleged that the move by the Southern governors was to negotiate the 2023 presidency with their 19 Northern colleagues that have kicked against power shift to the South. <laughs> no, no, I, I mean, I thought it was quite comical. I, I don't know why I laughed when I read it, uh, uh, Rufai, because I knew how upset you were yesterday when you were talking about the... I mean, it is funny. <laughs> but uh... satanic, the word satanic, how on earth is this move satanic? That makes it even more comical. I, I, 
I'm sure that person probably read the script from Monty Python. <laughs> it's, it's funny. It's, it's, it's a comical. It's like child's play. Chucky, let's be straight and forward. The last time I checked, an association is not the Nigerian people that will vote. Let's respect the Nigerian people. Let's stop all these associations talking here and there that you not support Southern presidency. Don't support. Others will support. We are saying open grazing. Please, the matter is clear. We want the cattle to do well. We want more meat, more milk, more productivity. If possible, maybe if we get ranching right, we must start exporting cattle to other parts and adding forex. Which is because the we don't goal because we don't have life. forex. It's, it's the ultimate that's goal. it. Goal. So and that's why we're putting the best solution forward. And the best solution everywhere in the world is intensive form of agriculture, which is ranching where you get better output. So it's as simple as And I don't even see why the case of open grazing correlates with presidential. I mean, how, how do you go open grazing, agricultural matter, personal business matter, and presidency? If they don't want to vote, they should not vote. <laughs> yeah, but they're going Nigerian to people will vote. Now come I beg you, what is all of this? Well, this is where we are in 2021, <laughs> where hey. open grazing is a campaign issue wow. of all things to be a campaign issue in the forthcoming elections. Open grazing, it's really bizarre. But you said that this is the ultimate goal. That may be to you. Mm -hmm. To them, their ultimate goal is preserving their way of life, regardless of the fact that it is backward, regardless of the fact that it's a complete anachronism, in spite of the fact that people are getting killed willy-nilly. They are so wedded to their way of life. They are genuinely threatened by any attempt to change it. This is how we see this thing. And it's so bad that it's now become a case of what is godly and what is satanic. Is question, they're couching right? it in those terms. That think that way, too. Yes. That is the, that, that, that's, that's the issue. Yes. It, that, that is what it has become. Yes. And they are the ones who are godly. So when you start to couch issues in those terms, you really do understand that this is an intractable problem. Yes. When you start to add that kind of language, Yes. to it. It's none of those open grazing, ranching, never the twin shall meet. These are not people who will ever compromise. We have a serious problem on our hands. And again, I will refer to my hopes for the President Muhammadu Buhari administration when it began in 2015, that these are the issues that he can use his enormous clout to address. But alas. Okay, Sally Alassane was the person who told us that anytime we hear Miyechi Ala, we should make a clear distinction between Miyechi Ala Kautal Hore and uh, the other group called Makban, mm -hmm. which is involved in. But for outsiders, it's probably very difficult to draw the a line. fine distinction. Right. But what he has said in this regard, yes, well, it's good to pose the question. How many votes can the Miyechi Ala <laughs> Kautal Hore uh, command? How many states uh, does the Miyechi Ala Kautal Hore uh, dominate? So in other words, it's just uh, on a flight of fancy you know, and uh, uh, stating uh, some kind of exaggerated uh, importance in terms of the capacity uh, to command or to influence electoral outcomes. The second leg of it, which is the most serious issue he raised, was that he was defending the federal government of Nigeria, yes. the office of the Attorney General yes. of the Federation, speaking through Dr. Umar Gwando, special assistant to the Attorney General on media, who had said that the federal government will support the Meiji Allah suing those governors who are talking about open grazing. And I think we made a point elsewhere that, look, you cannot use the office of the Attorney General of the Federation to play divisive politics. I've been looking for where Dr. Gwandu will have said, oh, I didn't say so, or it is this journalist that quoted him uh, out of a uh, contest, but I've not seen anything like that. And for Sally Alassane to come out boldly, yeah, yeah. to be boasting that to take the they have the office of the yeah. AGF behind them. I think, you know, that's a very bad signal, isn't it? It is. It Jineka? Is. Dr. Abati, <laughs> <laughs> thank you all for um, you. your brilliant analysis, Thanks. as Thank always. You. Thank That's you all much. I have for you on What's Trending today. I'll see you tomorrow.